Hello everyone. If you're wondering why my lighting is bad right now, it's because it is, and I don't have another ring light, so you're just gonna have to deal with this side of the screen being a little darker than this side where my actual mirror is. But yeah, you probably clicked on this because I destroyed all of my Morphe palettes, which is like kind of true, kind of not. I didn't like just, you know, hit them with a hammer and call it a day. I actually tried to depot all of the shadows which was very hard. Um, my friend helped me and her helping didn't add much. We both broke a ton of shadows. So for destroying my Morphe palettes, where do I begin? I feel like I have to go a little bit into my beginning with Morphe and some of Morphe's history too, because I feel like not only did I just lose interest for my Morphe palettes, but also I feel like the brand has kind of declined, maybe due to the, I feel like partly due to their marketing and packaging, partly due to the people they work with, which honestly, I don't really care if people are problematic or not. I mean, unless they've done something really, really, really bad, like murdered someone, you know, mm. but I know for the brand as a whole, it does affect some people's opinions. I'm not leaving that out. And yeah, with, I just, I don't know, I just lost interest in them and the palettes because I found new palettes that I like more. So I'm going to get into it specifically. When Morphe first started, they were new, fresh, and the beauty community was ready for them. Their big palettes originally offered many options for those in need of specific colors, tones, and shades. These palettes seem to offer a variety of shadows without the large expense that other palettes before ColourPop, of course, came with. But this all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The more palettes that Morphe produced, the more they all seemed to be the same. Was it the branding, the colors they chose, the packaging, or was it the fact that they oversaturated their own niche market after the first 10 palettes they created? This issue, combined with Morphe's quote-unquote shady collaborations with controversial influencers like Jeffree Star, James Charles, and Jaclyn Hill, put the company in a hole that they really just can't seem to dig themselves out of. Their collaborations have just kind of made them look like a company of cash grabs and if you combine this with the decline in quality of some of their newer palettes and the rising prices you get a company that just feels old worn out and unoriginal for me personally their palettes are just too big to work with and a lot of their shades look and swatch the exact same they really just don't inspire me there are too many colors in a single palette that are so similar, and with the minimal pops of color that they add, it's really hard to pay attention to some of the toned down shades they have that have the potential to be great colors for me. It's just hard to see them in the mesh of colors that all look the same. Smaller palettes from other brands for me appear just to be more curated and unique, and it looks like more thought was put into the shades, and these are some examples. First of all, we have Soft Glam. Soft Glam, I think, is a great example because it has neutrals that are similar, but not the same, like Morphe's palettes, and they're still inspiring without having crazy pops of colors. You know, these neutrals don't rely on pops of colors to sell the palette. They rely on being good neutrals, unlike Morphe's newer palettes. And also, they are really easy to use. Next, we have the Naked palettes. I chose the Naked um, Honey and Cherry palette because I have those to look at on the Sephora website. But um, all in all, with the Naked palettes, I really like them because they all fit under the same theme of being nude colors, but they all have their own uniqueness. They have the different palettes which provide the different nudes and different like tones of nudes that are fun to work with. And even though they're all under the same theme, it doesn't feel like you're using the same palette over and over again, so it makes you want to get, like, all of the palettes. Or at least choose your favorite one that you like, because there's enough variety to do that. And next, we I want to talk about the Carly Bible palette. So, the Carly Bible palette makes me want to talk about specific shades, because it has some really cool duochromes and shimmer shades that are, like, a combination of multiple colors, like Mandala. That's one of the shimmer ones. And then... The color OA is another really great one because it has this like dark blue overtone with a rainbow reflect and shades like this with these multiple colors are really unique and you just wouldn't find them in palettes like Morphe's. 
And lastly, I want to talk about the Retrograde palette. The Retrograde palette has enough pops of color to set itself apart from other palettes, but also the pops of color don't completely mask the nudes because the nudes in this palette aren't meant to be hidden by the brighter colors, unlike Morphe's palettes where they just seem to rely on pops of color so that you ignore the boring nudes that look the same. The nudes in the Huda palette, the Mercury and Retrograde palette, stand out and speak for themselves because they're really subtle but they're unique enough to make you want to use them and honestly i have the palette and i love it because the nudes in it i really just can't compare them to any other ones i have so they're fun and easy to work with and i have the pops of color but i use all the shades because they're all really awesome and morphe's palettes like i've been saying this whole time just all look the same so this is all why I wanted to pick apart my Morphe palettes so that I could look at each color individually in the palettes and take advantage of my favorite colors, including the shades that get lost in the array of shadows that look the same. And here we go. We already broke a shadow. Horrifically. It exploded in our faces. It was a sad and terrifying time when it happened. But anyways, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the process because it was quite the process and it took a long time. So I want to start out with just the different types of sh um, shadows. The mattes were actually really hard to depot even in the um, cardboard packaging. I mean, they were a lot easier in the cardboard packaging than the plastic one from the 35B, but they still cracked really easily. And it was mainly because the shades were either too chalky or very very soft and the soft ones were nice but they were man they just fell apart and then the majority of the shimmers actually came out just fine and we swatched a lot of them and they ended up actually being really pretty colors that both my friend and i liked a lot so that was really cool before this video because you probably noticed there were some shadows missing when i started recording before this video, I already depotted the shades that I wanted to keep for myself, so when my friend came over, she just chose the colors that she wanted after we depotted all of them, and we only threw out a few shades that were either A, broken, or B, too close to the colors we already had. So, in total, we depotted 99 shades and only threw out about 10, which I say was pretty good, and it's mostly because they were broken or they just really looked the same. We also kept the plastic 35B palette and just removed the plastic lining that originally held all of the pans in place so that my friend could repurpose that palette and arrange the shades that she depotted and liked um, and put them in there for herself. So overall, it was a good but very messy and time-consuming experience. I'm not really sure if I'd do it again because it took a lot of work, especially with the plastic palette. If anyone does it, you should probably just melt the glue with a hairdryer on the bottom of the palette first or something. But I am glad that we did find a way to re-inspire ourselves with these palettes and not just chuck them out completely. We also made a really ugly Franken shade out of some of the shadows we broke, so that was cool. But overall, it was really fun, and like I said, I'm glad we repurposed these palettes and didn't completely get rid of them. And I'm also glad I have a new kind of custom color story that I made for myself. Wait, oh, now it's... Is it filming? Or... Yes. Okay. In the trash. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. She gone. <laughs> So, in our journey, as you saw, we broke a lot of shadows. Some of the shadows broke and they kind of all went into the corner of the one palette, so we tipped it into this pan, which we broke a shadow out of, and it, we created this monstrosity, yeah, if it'll focus. And I put too much alcohol in it when I was trying to repress it, so now it looks disgusting. We created this color, and that is the result of destroying all of your Morphe palettes. It's so cracky. I shouldn't have put that much alcohol in it. I keep looking at the viewfinder too. I'm so sorry. It's so hard <laughs> when you actually have a viewfinder to look at with the camera. It's so hard to look at. Oh, and now I rub my finger into it and it's like a darker purple. So that's cool. So I'm going to swatch it on my arm right now. Okay. It's... I mean, it looks okay. Um doesn't really reflect all of the colors that are in here but that's fine <laughs> I guess I, I'd be lying if I said that Sophia and Nygaard didn't inspire us to do 
this and call it a Frank and eyeshadow, but <laughs> she's cool. I like her. Her bad makeup science is a lot better than mine and my friends. If I can get it out. So I got this magnetic palette. I actually got it for Christmas from my parents and um, it's from Amazon. I think it's only like $8 or something. It's not very expensive and it comes with magnetic adhesive sticker things. So that's really nice. You don't have to go out and buy them. It just comes with this, which is really cool. How many shades does it fit? It fits Six. It fits 18 shades in it, and this is the palette I created out of the shades I liked. This shade right here is actually really pretty, but because of all the other bright colors in it, I was just ignoring it. Also, I got another palette from Violet Foss that has bright colors. It's a lot better quality than the Morphe ones. So that's why I also kind of strayed away from Morphe, because I just found better quality shadows. But yeah, this one is like super pretty. It's actually super soft, and it goes on the skin like this. Yeah looks like that and it's a really pretty shimmer and that was like one of the colors I was ignoring so like I said I took all the colors I really like this one right here is a color pop color though and I put them together in a cohesive way that I think would make me want to use these colors more so than the actual Morphe palettes did they didn't really make me want to use them but this does I put like all my pretty rainbow bright colors over here and then I did like my earth tones and then very light neutral mattes and shimmers over here so it's all something I can work with the colors are categorized in a way I like in that palette versus with the Morphe palette I was just like eh, about how they were put together if you have a palette that's really big like a Morphe palette that's cool. If you like using it, that's cool. I think it might even be a good idea for beginners to get just like one big Morphe palette so they have a lot to work with and they can kind of get an idea of what colors they like working with without spending a bunch of money on multiple palettes. Then you can explore what you like and don't like from there. I, even though Jaclyn Hill is Jaclyn Hill, I would still recommend the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I do like that one. I think that is actually a good palette for beginners if you want to play around with stuff. But overall, if you have a big palette and you know you don't want to use it and you like collecting smaller palettes like these, which I am wearing today, I would stick with those, but also try to salvage your palettes and don't throw them out. Like depotting them was interesting and hard as you saw, but I think if you use like a hair dryer on the bottom of the plastic ones to melt the glue a little bit, it'll be better. Just don't melt the plastic. I'm not liable if you do that. Please don't sue me. But yeah. If you have any makeup you don't like, I think you should try salvaging it in one in some way or another so that you can get use out of it and reignite the excitement you once had for it once when you bought it. Or at least if you can like give it to a friend or something. Selling used makeup is kind of iffy, so I wouldn't really sell your makeup. I don't think that's the best idea. But if you have someone close to you who can use something like an eyeshadow palette, please don't give anyone your mascara. Some people share mascaras and it makes me want to die. So don't do that. But if for eyeshadow and stuff like that, see if you can give it to someone and get use out of it and see if you can rearrange it in a way that you really like. Because it's a real shame to waste makeup, but also, you know, it's a shame to just have makeup sitting there and you're not touching it at all because you don't want to throw it out. If you have makeup you don't like, see if you can do something with it. Other than that, yeah, that's all I have to say. I will see you guys soon. I will try making more videos this holiday season or this winter break season for all you college kids. So yeah, anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.